Hello there, gang, and welcome to the first official episode of Displaying Model Behavior for 2023. You know what this is? It's the Earth's mightiest video podcast. So take off your pants, crack a beer, and let's talk toys. Let's talk about my top 10 figures of Q4 2023. Yeah, I, I got a bit of a backlog now. We're halfway through January and I haven't even done my year-end awards. It's going to be probably summertime before I'm telling you what my top 10 Marvel Legends of 2022 were. But you know what? doesn't matter because we're going to take it all in our stride. Speaking of which, before I do anything else, I want to say a massive, huge shout out and thank you to Dauntless over on Instagram, gifted.mutants. This dude is just an incredible artist. And he messaged me, he said like, man, I'd love to do some art for you. I was like, dude, go for it, is what I said without the awkward pause. And I'm, I'm so blown away, no pun intended, because this particular brand style of artwork, his niche is the somewhat uh, somewhat masculine, not safe for work type variety. And he was like, yeah, would you mind if I draw you in this style? And I was like, dude, I am a vain and arrogant creature. Of course I don't mind if you do me in that style. So you can go over and check out his artwork if that's your cup of tea. But I just got to put that little content warning on. It's not necessarily... <laughs> family friendly uh, or safe for work so uh you know proceed with caution but oh my goodness just just the style and the quality of this artwork stunning man i mean i look amazing it also looks like i was bitten by a radioactive spider with a massive <laughs> but i i love it i dig it dauntless Thank you so much, man. So anyway, let's tackle the top 10 action figures of Q4 2022. So coming in first, a couple of honorable mentions. First of all, Galactus. Yeah, I know, of course. Like, how can that just be an honorable mention? Well, because I don't even want to count him amongst action figures. Same as with the Marvel Legends top 10 I'm going to do. He's just his own thing. Like, how can anything compare to the size, scale, price, and everything of Galactus? It's it's apples and oranges. So even though, yeah, okay, objectively, yeah, Galactus is the biggest, best, most awesome figure of Q4 or the entire year, I'm not going to include him in the top 10 because he's just his own beast. So Galactus gets his own sort of shout out here because he ain't your normal action figure. He's his own thing, so that's why he gets his own little special section there. Now we've got a figure that I only just received at the end of quarter four, but he came out last year, which is of course Krampus from Cole. Dude, thank you so much. An amazing, amazing Christmas present. So blown away by this. I love this dude so, so much. He's wicked, gnarly, awesome. I love Christmas. I love mythology. Smoosh them together. You got Krampus. Amazing figure, but not a Q4 figure. But I want to say a big shout out to him. I love this guy. Then another figure I picked up in Q4 that is not a Q4 figure. Mezco Iron Fist. Absolutely adore everything about this guy. The cloth goods that don't look like a sock in my opinion, and just the beautiful detail on everything going on here. Absolute mwah! Chef's kiss of a figure, but he's not Q4. And the final non-Q4 figure that I just wanted to shout out because I bought him in Q4 is Mezco Batman. I forget, is it Sovereign Knight? It's one of the knights. Whichever knight it is, it's the badass knight. I did a Patreon review of this guy and unboxing, but just a quick synopsis. It's freaking awesome. For me personally, my ideal perfect Batman with the blues, the greys, the classic logo, insignia, everything. This, this is what Bat should look like. If I only wanted one, I only wanted one quintessential Batman figure. This is the guy. So wicked. And finally, a couple of Q4 figures that actually were released in Q4, but I just didn't want them to be in the top 10 because I don't think they deserve it, quite frankly, and that is Agony and Riot from the Venom 3-pack. They're uh, underwhelming. I, I saw a couple of people actually, like, really do like Agony, and, you know, I appreciate this is, like, probably the most they were ever going to do with her. At least she's on the new female body with the extra articulation. That's... That's something. But still, I think she's a very, very basic figure. But at least she pops and stands out with the bright colour. Derpy McDerperson over here. Derp, I'm a symbiote. 
Doop. Nah, I, I got no time for this guy. But I'm keeping them both because they do complete the Life Foundation. And that's their Get Out of Jail Free card. Right! Those are all the honourable mentions. Let's talk about the top 10 figures of Q4. First up in the number 10 spot, it is our first Marvel legend, and that is Spiral. Oh my goodness, Hasbro went all in with this lady, and it shows she is fantastic with the amount of work that has gone into the tooling to really do her justice. Do I have her in hand? No, I sold her. But Dave, how can you have sold her if she's in your top 10? Obviously, she's not that good in your eye. Yeah, she is. I just didn't have a place for her because I don't collect like wider X-Men. It's just the 90s gym lead team that I want. So she's surplus to requirements, but that doesn't mean that I didn't appreciate what went into making her a really great figure. All that tooling around the arms and shoulders to give her those extra arms and weapons absolutely terrific. I do take a few points off because she's, she's quite gummy. The plastic is, it, it, it's quite gummy plastic. However, once you've got her posed in a great stance, she looks terrific. And to go with the rest of the Mojo box set, yeah, she was awesome. Now we got some big one in hand. <laughs> that sounded weird. Bane, McFarlane Bane. This I was talking earlier about my quintessential Batman. This is the quintessential Bane here. McFarlane absolutely nailed this guy. I might be giving him a few extra points because I love the character of Bane. And I've wanted, I've wanted a classic version for the longest time. There's a few little detracting type points. He doesn't have any other accessories. Like fisted hands would have been great. And a buddy of mine, thank you dude so much, sent me some custom fists that I just need to give him a hot water bath and pop these off and put those on. Then he'll have the, the put up your dukes type look. But in the meantime though, this is so great. I love the big venom tank on his back with the wonderful neon green going in there. And just the texture of all of his combat gear. So, so great with the big eyes. And he's a little mm, fraction, a little bit bigger than I would have liked. But that's, that's okay because he's Bane. He's got the venom coursing through him. Plus, I get to recreate Marvel vs. DC from the 90s where he fights Captain America. That That's just, oh, that's my 90s nostalgia right there. So I love this as a display too. So on the whole, I'm, I'm still looking for maybe maybe a more classic Bane, which I know McFarlane, no, not McFarlane, uh, Mafex are going to be doing. So I'll keep my eye out for him. But in the meantime, nah, this guy's wicked. In the number eight spot, we have one that I was kind of debating on, which is Retro Beast. Now I know that like, does he deserve to be that high? Because he is kind of just a re-release, but when they do so much to change him up and make him distinct, I mean, come on. It's beautiful. I almost passed him by. I almost didn't bother. I was like, nah, I've got the original. I don't need the lab coat or what. No, no, I, I did. He's terrific. This, this is what Marvel Legends should be. I don't mind paying. The new prices are a little extra to get something that feels like it's not just a generic printed out action figure, but actually feels like it has extra worth and value and just love that's gone into making it. This feels like love has gone into making Beast and I dig it and that's why I love him. So the different head sculpts are wonderful. The more relaxed Hank McCoy look with the glasses. He looks so cerebral. I had to glue the glasses on. So that was one thing. They could have clipped a bit better, but it doesn't matter. It's a tiny bit of super glue, bam, they ain't going nowhere. Then the wonderful little beakers and vials. They're getting a lot of use out of these now, but more power to them because they look great. So to have him, I've got him clutching onto the side of my Detolf, hanging off and just, he looks great. I adore this guy. Hasbro, if you're gonna re-release figures, this is how you do it. You upgrade, update, and make them irresistible. Well done. Five stars. Or similar. Five stars means perfect. He's not perfect, but dang, he's good. In the number seven spot, we have what was a huge impulse purchase for me. Hua! The Four Horsemen Figure Obscura Headless Horseman. Ah, oh, <laughs> when I saw him, I was like, it's a limited window, no time. Don't think about it, Dave. You want it, order it, boom, done it. And I regret nothing. He looks so great. You know me, love pumpkins, love Halloween. I'm dressed as a pumpkin here. So I, I had to get him. Because now every Halloween, this guy is going to have pride of place. I adore what they've done with all of this. I mean, the horse is just 
incredible. It's massive, huge, big beast of a creature. But then all the details on the horseman himself here. I, I'm not like a massive four horseman expert, so I, I'm pretty sure that it's all reuse, I think. You know, I'm, I, I'm sure the, the pumpkin is new and whatnot, but it, it doesn't matter. It, it does exactly what it needs to do. Huge, big, wired cloth cape as well that just you can spiral out. And what I really, really adore about this is that the horse can stand with its tail as like a kickstand. It can stay in a bucking pose. It's, it's a bucking pose right here, mate. Looks fantastic. Absolutely dig this guy so much. Big, big highlight of Q4. Maybe of the year as well. We'll find out when I eventually get around to doing that figure list. But in the meantime, ah, I love this guy. In the number six slot, we go back to the X-Men now with Mafex Jean Grey. This was one that, as we do with most Mafex, we wait a while for. <laughs> I pre-ordered this lady a long time ago, and when I got her, she didn't disappoint. There are certain things I really, really love, and a couple that I'm like, ah, you know what, the cheaper Marvel Legend might have a bit of an edge as well. So first of all, just the expressions, like the, the, the face, it feels alive. There's a lot going on with this, and plus just the shiny metallic blue really pops, makes a figure come alive. So that's terrific. And I just love, the thing with Mafex is it feels like high quality, like every every joint and movement feels so smooth. And just the, the plastic material, I don't know what type of plastic it is, but it feels almost like it's got a kind of a porcelain kind of feel to it. It's obviously not that fragile, but it doesn't feel like cheap gummy stuff. It feels like this has been built with love, craft and care and built to last and that makes a big big difference. I like that she comes with a power effect but it's also just a weird little pink snot bubble so it doesn't really, she, it could have been more. Some more swirly whirly pink stuff that would have been nice to have been able to add. But still, to have her in a battle type pose with all the wonderful articulation that she does have, you can really get creative with how you pose her. So many different options as well to have the mask up or down, the neutral face. A lot of fun to be had with Jean. And I feel like, yeah, the McFarlane ones, I must keep saying McFarlane, Marvel Legends ones, they are actually, they're, they're, they're great, perfectly competent Jean Greys. But if you just want to go like, just, just a little, a little something extra, this is that little something extra that really kind of ties the whole X-Men collection together. I really dig her. Now we're in the top five and we got some big, big ones here. First of all, Life Foundation Eddie Brock. Ha ha ha! Ah, this, finally, been talking a lot this issue, this video, about quintessential versions of characters. And finally, after so many years and years of Venom after Venom after Venom, they've finally been piecing together the ultimate version. And this is it. Omega red body, shoulder holes filled in, a venom face that's actually coming around the human one. That's what I always wanted. And the expression of Eddie Brock here, I love because this is early to mid 90s, still slightly villainous Eddie Brock. This isn't your superhero Eddie. This isn't King in Black Eddie. This is this is psycho killer Eddie here. Psycho killer. Guess can see. Ba, 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 ba. I, I dig it. This is the venom that I've always wanted. And plus, he came with the claws, he came with the fisted hands, he came with the full venom head as well. This is what a standard Marvel legend should be. And I know that's not always going to be the case, and you had to buy a box set to get him, that does suck. But if you put all that to one side and you just look at this, if you if you paid full price for this figure as a single release figure, boom, I'd say like it's one of the perfect Marvel Legends there. Big, chunky, colorful, great paint job. Two heads, two different pairs of hands. That's what it should be. That's what we got here. I love this guy. In the number four slot, it's someone who has just arrived and that is the Norse horse himself, Beta Ray Bill from Select. Yes, it is Select. I had a little, little bit of brain work there. Man, the chonk. He's a chonky boy, and I love it. Is he too big to scale with Legends? Technically, yeah, but it doesn't matter. He's a giant alien horse. Doesn't have to be perfect, at least not in my eye. But for select scale, of course he scales perfectly. But it's just everything. I love him. I mean, talk about something that dominates the shelf with bright colors as well. I, I love that so much. I don't even know where to begin. The huge big crest 
mohawk on his gladiator type helmet. And the way that they've done it with a ripple kind of effect. So it's like blowing in the breeze. So stunning. Only got one head. That's fine. Only one pair of hands. That's also fine because less than 30 bucks. I mean, only by a couple of cents, but still less than 30 bucks gets you all of this. Plus, he's got his beautiful spinning hammer version as well. The big circle arc. That's incredible. I display him with the normal one just to save space because he takes up so much room. But I ain't mad about that because he's just stunning with the bright gold accents. Everything. The more I talk about him, the more I love him. Beta Ray Bill. Absolute highlight. Select. It's so funny because select are just wildly variable in you know the quality I feel like I look at some of their human characters and I just think Whoa! and then I look at some of their more monster type characters and they just set the standard man this is incredible this Norse horse he's the, he's the bee's knees man absolutely fantastic speaking of absolutely fantastic Bernice. It is, it is Bernice isn't it from the Xerxes Zer wow I'm just getting all the names wrong doesn't matter. One name I am going to get correct though. Holy moly. Cozen, my brother, my friend, my man sent this to me because he knew like, Dave, you ain't going to get her in the UK. And I know you want her because <laughs> I saw the, the um, uh, Articulated Ninja video on, on these figures. And I was like, that's amazing. These are absolutely awesome. I love them. And yeah, England, of course, you need import fees and all that stuff. It's it's a lot. And then, uh, yeah, Cozen was just like, don't worry, dude. Merry Christmas. I got gotcha. you. Holy potatoes, man. Thank you so much because I love her. This again, this is the, the art of action figures. It's just everything can be taken off and, you know, tra 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 I'm not going to not going to edit that <laughs> and traded with the other two gladiator ladies. So you can mash up on kit bash all the different character armor. I'm, I'm gambling over my words here, but yeah, it's just fantastic. So you got the helmet and also what's a really nice touch is that she has removable hair as well. Without the helmet, you can put a uh, different hair on her that looks fuller and then to put the mask on. Yeah, just pop the hair off and then boom, put this over the top. And she's just absolutely phenomenal. The beautiful work on all of her accessories, all of the guard shin pads and the, the, the faces, the sculpting, just it's beautiful. The weapons all slotting into the holsters and just a complete action figure. And then again, like I said, check out Articulated Ninja's review because he shows you all the different type of kit bashes and things that you can do. This base body, like you can strip her down just to the, the underwear there. So you can actually kit bash and customize to your heart's delight. Basically, whatever you want to do with this basic female body, you now have this excellently put together, you know, fantastic articulation and just the proportions and curves just is a brilliant base model for anything else you might want to do in a customizing kit bashing kind of sense. So yeah, so much to love about this. Absolutely fantastic. She's awesome. Coming in now at the number two spot, one that was a massive surprise to me is Beast Wars Trans Metal 2 Megatron. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> this is just incredible. I've always like dabbled or thought about dabbling in Transformers. I love Transformers, but I've never been a fan of the figures themselves. Because to me, I always thought, no, oh, they look a bit too plasticky. The, the, the different modes are compromised so that it can transform. Not great paintwork. I, I just, I, it wasn't enough to grab me. And then I saw this guy and I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to have to try. I've got to at least experiment to see if Transformers can win me over. And oh my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, this this won me over. This might be an outlier. It might be an anomaly. I don't think I'm going to dive into Transformers, but just as one, this Megatron. Ah, oh, just it, it, absolutely incredible. So yeah, I was blown away that both modes, Robot and Dragon, look 
fantastic. And and the transformation, it, it is so satisfying. I gotta say, just fun playing around and transforming Megatron. That just brings so much joy to me. And just the, the, the paintwork that is here is great. Looks looks manga-ish, looks kind of Resident Evil with the eye there, the huge dragon claws, the beautiful wings. Just like Beta Ray Bill, he dominates any shelf that he is on, just as Megatron should. Absolute mwah, chef's kiss. Love this dude. And finally, my number one figure of Q4 has to be, for me, Santa! Oh my god! From Four Horsemen Studios. They gave us Krampus first, and now we've got the big man himself. And I, I, I adore everything they've done with this, because there is so much. I mean, just look at this. This isn't even including all the accessories he does come with. I'm a, I love Christmas. Massive big kid for Christmas. And this is just, this is the Christmas action figure. This, this is Santa Claus. Look at everything going on with him. It's absolutely incredible. He's got so many layers to him. He's got like obviously the, the base body, he's got the purple tunic underneath, the big Santa coat, the hood is a separate part as well that clips on with a proper clip. He's got his sack full of toys, which actually it has toys inside. And also a couple of uh, armor heads as well, just to bulk out the bag. Nice thinking, Four Horsemen. But then he's got the, the drum, this beautifully. I love all the crafting, sculpting and paintwork that's gone into his other satchel of toys here. He's got little, little touches. It's just, I, I never cease to be amazed and blown away by what they've done, what they've put together. The beautiful golden trim on here as well. And, and just the, the, the feeling of the coat is like kind of a velour kind of, it, it feels quality. You know, if I had a coat made out of this, I'd be like, yeah, this is this is a fine garment right here. It's got bendy wire as well, so you can have it kind of blowing in the breeze if you want. And the beautiful staff with the lantern in here as well. It's just such a complete, beautiful Father Christmas. Someone really put a lot of love and care. So much love and care into this. Now you can put them together with Krampus as well. Like, this this is not just an action figure. This is my Christmas decorations now. They, they just He's just... Perfect. I can't get over. Also, the, the look of his face, the, the sculpting and the style, it looks like human, but also kind of animated in a, a warm, fatherly Christmas kind of way. I just adore everything about him. Can I, can I put a cross to you? Have I made it clear enough how much I like this guy? Because I do a lot. So easily my number one figure of Q4. Absolutely adore. Uh, Mythic Legions, Four Horsemen, whatever you want to call him, call him the ultimate Santa Claus. And folks, that does it for my top 10 figures of Q4. Which ones of these are going to be reappearing in the top 10 of the year? Well, we're going to find out pretty soon. I've got a lot of catching up to do with a lot of year-end awards type videos, so it's going to be a fun ride for the next week or so. But gang, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for hanging on and waiting while I took a little break over Christmas. I am so happy to be back running the running the channel and making these... Running the channel. Yeah, yes, with all of my employees here. <laughs> <laughs> so gang, thank you for watching. If you want to support the channel further, you can do by going over to patreon.com, toss a couple of bucks my way and helps me keep in action figures and keep the lights on. Or you can grab a channel membership as well, be part of the community and watch all the extra videos and all that good stuff. So gang, thank you as always. And until next time, keep displaying model behavior. Hello there, gang, and welcome to the good start to the year. <laughs> Hello there, gang, and welcome to the first official proper episode of Displaying Model Behavior of 2023, and I'm losing my voice. And now, I sound like Jason Statham. You don't know me, but you're about to. That was a good Jason Statham. Yeah.